Alright, let's go. Let's continue on. What the? Alice? With a short sort of roar, the light went black. Following came the sound of something pounding glass, then the sound of a window shattering. You felt something pass between you and Mark. Wet cloth brushing your arm. Well, looks like you boys have found yourself caught in my web. Like flies, like flies who know they're doomed and waiting for their miserable lives to end. Ah, bring back memories. Well, I'll be seeing you soon. Then the lights came on, and it's by magic she was gone. I like the fact that this is actually closely resembling what's happening in the what happens in the game, because it, it does happen. <laughs> what just happened? That appeared to be a sort of a decayed Alice. Shutters. Ugh, creepy. And Alice is my favorite too. Uh, don't tell the others. Well, let's get Sammy and Bendai and look for the others. They should be should have returned a while ago. Right. You go out and get the two before heading forward and stop at the junction. One path was labeled skew bus and the other angel. Like devil and angel. Moving on. Hmm. I usually take the angel path. I'll enter the skew bus one. Okay. Come on. As soon as both of you entered each path, the door shut behind you. Whoa. No turning back. You looked around to find yourself in a small room with you ankle deep in ink. There was a single Bendai cutout and right next to it was an audio tape leaning on top of a chair. What is this room? Curious to see if you'll find the answer it in its recording, you press play on the tape recorder. Ugh. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with dreaming. Wishing there the impossible is just human nature. That's how my dad got it started. Just as pencil and a dream. Just a pencil and a dream. We all wanted everything without even having a lift a finger. They say you just have to believe. Belief can make you succeed. Belief can make you rich. Belief can make you powerful. Why, with enough belief, you could even cheat death itself. Make yourself immortal and unbreakable. Now that is a beautiful and possibly silly thought. You were frozen, trying to take it all in. As you did, you couldn't help but relief relive the times you had with her. May 30th, 1972. Oh, and that must be Joey. Alright. Yep, it's conf it's confirmed to be a girl. Alright. This game's fucked my head already. Wow, the animation studio brings back memories of when our fathers would bring us along to work, huh? Uh, Joey, I don't want to, I don't know how to tell you this, but your shirt's undone. Your belly's showing. It's not professional. Sort it out or sew it onto your skin. Huh. <laughs> you can say that again. Remember how they would they would give us our own little corner to make short fake episodes? Oh yeah. And I remember how Alright, you know I'll give her I'll give her the voice. <clears throat> oh yeah. And I remember how I would boss you around. Draw it again. The expression's wrong. We need more detailed background. <laughs> Thinking about it now, I I kinda feel bad for doing that to you. But it was for a Louis company. Yeah, no odd feelings. I was happy to help out a pretty girl. You cover your mouth with a hand as you felt your fa her, your face becoming warm. Ah, aren't you sweet? I had to change voice. You blush more. L let's get set up, shall we? Of course. September thirtieth, nineteen seventy-two. All right, and done. The final frame is done. Seriously, that's great. Now. All we have to do is string it all together and we got the first episode done. Oh, this is wonderful. She hugs you tight. You blush a bit and she notices. And she also notices something growing down there. Do I have to say? Aw, has anyone told you you're cute when you blush? I, I don't believe so. Well, now someone has you blushed. Hey, why don't we celebrate the pilot being finished with a little get-together? Just does a nice dinner at the restaurant down the street. My treat. How does that sound? Does it end at your house? Yes, then no. Th that, that sounds nice. He, <laughs> I'm glad. That night, I finally realized that Joey liked me. And if, and if it wasn't obvious, we quickly found out that we shared feelings for each other. And for us, on that night, we saw our life as both romantic partners and business partners. I f*** 
fuck the hell? Breathe out! <laughs> it's America. Alright, this is what American people do, apparently. This is what I was taught. You guys have to fuck each other in the heads. Let's just leave it at that. It went as well as it could have gone. In fact, five years later, I ended up proposing to her. Unfortunately, due to our busy schedules with the show, we never we we never really got to set up a wedding. In fact, five more years later, and we were already talking about having a kid. It was funny, in a sense, but that was when Joey started acting strange. July 19, 1982. I was sketching Bendy, Boris, and Alice in order to test out Really? In order to test out new poses, such when Joey came up behind me. <laughs> the baby's dead! I got. That's not even funny, Nick. What the fuck's wrong with you? Oh, hi, dear. How's it going? She didn't respond and focused her eyes on the Bendy droid. Why the fuck did you just draw Bendy? Do you realize that we've got copyright issues? Uh. And I'm drunk. It's wrong. Yeah, it is wrong. <laughs> huh? What do you mean? You heard me, you moron. You messed up Bendy's anatomy. Anatomy, Tommy. M moron. You felt hurt. She seemed to notice as you. S she seems to notice as her expression softened. I'm sorry, dear. I I'm just very stressed right now. Stressed about what? Hey, face! Wait, you've been acting like this ever since you got a checkup at the hospital yesterday. J Joey? The baby's dead, isn't it? I it's dead. Please tell me that joke wasn't. She quickly handed you an envelope and walked away. In that envelope, I had found out that Joey had a rare heritably hereditary disease. I didn't know it, what it was called, but what I cared about is what it does. It basically, it basically makes your lower body weak and, in some cases, can cause death. Obviously, both her and me were terrified. Even though we could have we could have had children, knowing the disease could tra be transmitted to their child through genes stopped her from wanting a child. You could adopt. And due to the disease, she was put in a wheelchair to compensate for her weak lower body. After that, she acted more distant and seemed lost in thought. Even. Every time she came to the studio, I never understood it. She never told me anything about her thoughts. As much as I wanted to say that our home life was perfect, it wasn't. In fact, she grew distanced just a second. Good enough. I'll put this on charge again. In fact, in fact, she grew so distant that I had no choice. December 2nd, 1992. I woke up to find Joey silently dressing. Silently dressing. No real expression on her face. Hey, dear. She's able to stand. Where's the wheelchair? You couldn't draw in a wheelchair or something? You drew her like that. What, Henry? Uh, uh, okay, forget it. I feel like things aren't working out between us anymore. Is it because I'm I'm in a wheelchair? Bye! You you do? Yeah, maybe. Maybe I should leave. F fine then! See if I care! Wow, that was like the... Oh, the battery! I, I got nothing! I have nothing to charge the battery with! Uh, hang on. <laughs> oh, God! The cable's not doing much job. The, the, the screen on the camera is going completely haywire. Right. We'll just have to just hope for the best. Hi, face. Hi, face. I'm sorry, Joey, but you know this isn't working out like it used to. You giving up on her because she's paralyzed? Before she got into a wheelchair, she turned to you. Goodbye. She gave you a sad look before getting in a wheelchair and exiting. I then packed and left. Whenever I fall back to this moment, I wonder if I should have tried to <coughs> try to amend our relationship in some way. But then I know, down in my heart, that it would have ended the same no matter what we tried. About two weeks later, I got terrible news of her fate. Uh, whoops. July 
19, 2002, present. Oh, it was Game Space 2002, great. Narrator Switch. You pace around the room, think about what you just heard while trying not to stare at the boobs of, a skin of the skimpy angel cardboard cutout. Good God, man, control yourself! So this woman, Susie Campbell, got fired and was replaced by a, name na by a girl named Allison, correct? Oh, so we were with... Alright, okay, so we were with one... Okay, I take it we were by ourselves before, okay. I like, I love, the, I love how much, like, details they put into this game. But whoever made this put a lot of effort into this. And I, I, it, when Bendy is finished completely and Chapter 5 is finally released, I'm going to return to this because th th this is good. I'm not going to lie. It, it's an issue I admit, but it's all right. It's okay, good visual novel, in my opinion. Alison Carey, yes. In my opinion, Susie was a great singer and had a wide variety of voices, but Allison was better at nailing some of the notes and delivering the lines. I liked both girls, though I came to see why Joey replaced Susie. Hmm, I'm curious. What were they like? Susie was a huge flirt with a l and was a little goofy, if not being eccentric at times. She was also short and a bit busty. Allison was one of the sweetest women I have ever met, such an innocent sweetheart. Susie hated Allison for taking her star role, of course, but Allison had no idea. She treated Susie as her best friend. I think she used to call themselves the Angels Choir. Susie hated it, but I think she was just secretly jealous that she hasn't come up with it. Huh. What happened to them when the place closed? Not sure. But it might but but it might have been the same thing that happened to me, Norma and Wonder. What do you mean? And who are those two? Well, Norma was a film projectorist, projectorist, and she was tall and was a an African American like you. Oh, so we're Af we're black now. Okay, you you didn't establish this earlier. I a small little detail. I I like that. You know uh, that's you know what I respect that. I respect that. You know. Shema just called her a hound dog then. <laughs> My hand. Nice lady she was. Too bad I started going crazy. I started going crazy around her, and she got annoyed with me. We probably would have been good friends if I didn't just smash her head with a projector. I guess it was a projector. Is out that projector creature that, that's in chapter three? Yeah, we're gonna see her, aren't we? As for Wanda, she was the janitor and mechanic. She was a bit excitable, lazy, and didn't quite understand what was going on most of the time. When Joey had gone missing, she got confused. Oh, she was just. I just realized. Okay, yeah, she got confused and said that we should cheer up. <laughs> I hate having to be the one to tell her that Joey was gone. Wow, yeah, it was a sad day, even for those who didn't like Joey. I'll bet. Well, let's get going. We don't want to be behind the old man. <laughs> yeah, come on, Bendai. Bendai was been. Bendy had been sleeping next to Alice Cotto. Uh, oh, hi. Sorry. You continue walking as you do. Your face keeps falling, falling on one thing. Uh, Mark, you realize that I can see you staring at my boobs. Well, why did you draw them on yourself then? <laughs> That's logic. Blush. I was looking at your face too. I just think you have a really nice figure. That's all. <laughs> nice cover. Say, just in case we make it out of here, you're pretty cute. Don't end this on a sex scene. Your face turns red and Bandai giggles. I think you're cute too. Heh, <laughs> thanks, both of you. Blush. Then again, if someone called me cute, I'd probably blush. Or freak out because two girls just call me cute. I'm not cute, I'm fucking 21. I'm ha- They giggle a bit as you find yourself in a hallway. As you walk towards it, a Bandai cutout appears. Whoa. Wah! Next time on Bandai Official Novel. Yeah, nobody cares. Let me guess. Are we gonna see like a 90s Betty's or something? Uh, I think young Betty is the third girl. Oh god. God damn it! I just did!